anaphylaxis as we all know is a serious and potentially life threatening condition which if not treated readily can be fatal it can be associated with vaccinations and even iv medications in pediatric age group and many of us are not clear on as to how to diagnose and manage it hence this video symptoms in decreasing order of frequency are cutaneous like urticarial rash angioedema flushing and itching respiratory like laryngospasm bronchospasm manifested as wheezing gasping and cyanosis abdominal like colic abdominal pain vomiting diarrhea and cardiovascular like hypotension arrhythmias and unconsciousness certain conditions which may cause it include drugs like penicillins nsaids ace inhibitors and even vaccines in intravenous immunoglobulin latex which is present in surgical gloves food items like nuts especially peanuts milk egg fish insect bite by bees and wasps physical factors like heat cold sunlight etc and idiopathic so practically anything can cause anaphylaxis in children now recognition in infants is relatively difficult due to their inability to communicate so the symptoms and signs include non specific behavioral changes like persistent crying unrest irritability fright sudden quieting flushing of the skin hoarseness dysphonia drooling recurrent regurgitation vomiting or diarrhea hypotension drowsiness and somnolence especially if these symptom signs are of acute onset so what actually happens is that there is IgE mediated sudden systemic release of mast cells and basophil mediators which are histamines primarily this leads to edema of tissue causing laryngeal and bronchial constriction and dilatation of blood vessels sometimes there is direct mast cell activation for example in cold exercise and with certain medications for example opioids other immunological mechanisms include the complicant the complement cascade and the coagulation pathway activation there are certain factors which increase the risk of having anaphylaxis first is age infants especially because they have non specific symptom signs which leads to a delay in recognition because of their inability to communicate and secondly adolescents because they have an increased risk taking behavior they want to experiment with everything then there are certain underlying illnesses for example asthma or other chronic respiratory disorders atopia of any kind especially systemic mastocytosis depression cognitive dysfunction and substance abuse the onset can be early within minutes of exposure or it can be delayed that is more than 30 minutes after the exposure has occurred an episode can last from minutes to hours and even more than 24 hours at times so the treatment of choice is intramuscular epinephrine in a dilution of 1 is to 1000 which is the normal dilution in which epinephrine is supplied to the hospitals the dose is 0.01 mg per kg or 0.5 mg so you must also remember that if the patient requires cpr due to anaphylaxis or otherwise as well the dose of adrenaline is increased to 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg and sometimes atropine might also be required in case there is asystole or pulseless electrical activity the next thing is that 100% oxygen or intubation needs to be done and one must be prepared for cricothyrotomy you may have to open the anesthesia people if there is severe laryngospasm so this is one condition in which im epinephrine comes even before the a of abc which we normally seen during management of any patient and the third thing is normal saline bolus at the rate of 20 ml per kg especially if hypotension is there followed by subsequent management of shock as required why because the anaphylaxis leads to increased vascular permeability and this might cause up to the loss of even 35% of circulating blood volume so rapid fluid bolus also needs to be given now coming on to the drugs which are used so the main drug is epinephrine intramuscularly it is given in a dilution of 1 is to 1000 whereas intravenously it is given in a dilution of 1 is to 10000 that is you have to dilute the normally available epinephrine 10 times so the dose of im epinephrine is in less than 12 years is 0.01 mg per kg maximum 0.5 mg 
and in more than 12 years age group it is 0.5 mg. The dose of intravenous epinephrine is 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg and it is repeated as and when required uh, every 5 to 15 minutes. You must also remember that epinephrine drug has a very short expiry so you must check the date every time before using. The next class of drugs is H1 antihistamines. These include two drugs that is cetrazine and diphenhydramine. Cetrazine is given orally OD and the dose is between 6 months to 2 years it is 2.5 mg between 2 to 5 years it is 2.5 to 5 mg and for more than 5 years it is 5 to 10 mg. Diphenhydramine is the dose is 1 mg per kg per dose intramuscular or intravenously and can be repeated 4 to 6 hourly. Then the next class of drugs is H2 antagonist that is ranitidine. The dose is again 1 mg per kg per oral or IV. Steroids like prednisolone 1 mg per kg per dose per oral or methylprednisolone 1 mg per kg per dose intravenously may also need to be given. And bronchodilators especially if respiratory symptoms are there in which we use a salbutamol respiratory solution 2.5 to 5 mg per dose for nebulization every 20 minutes for the first hour and then as uh, required every 2 to 3 hourly and epinephrine again 1 is to 1000 dilution 2.5 to 5 ml of L epinephrine for nebulization or 0 0.01 ml per kg of racemic epinephrine. To prevent anaphylaxis one must avoid the triggering agent, educate the patient about the symptom recognition and administration of emergency drugs especially if the child has food allergy. Also, using the non-latex gloves and materials should be done in children who are undergoing repeated surgeries because repeated antigen exposure may cause anaphylaxis in them. Sometimes you also have to give prescription for epinephrine autopen injector and prescription for a 3 day course of oral H1 or H2 antagonists and oral steroids. Now there is a term called as biphasic anaphylaxis that is symptom recurrence after apparent resolution of the first episode. So what happens is that this usually occurs for 1 to 72 hours after the first symptom onset. It is usually seen when the therapy for the initial episode is initiated late and the initial symptoms are more severe, they are likely to relapse. It usually occurs within 4 to 6 hours and hence a minimum observation period of 4 to 6 hours should be considered before considering discharge of the patient and preferably the patient should be observed for 12 to 24 hours before discharging. Thank you so much for watching and please do share the knowledge. Thank you.